Now we're talking about the equipment grounding conductor for receptacles and fixed equipment in patient care spaces. Let me make this statement. Okay. In the patient care space, that means you're connecting um, um, liquids. Liquids, you're, you're putting a TENS machines, you're putting muscle IV. things. You're, in other words, you're making some kind of electrical, maybe a connection. You're doing blood pressure, sure. okay? Because it's a patient care space, they say, you know what? We want to make sure that if there's a fault, that we take that voltage and we remove that voltage by clearing the fault. And we can't take a chance of having a single effective ground fault current path. Where we normally say, well, Romex is, is your fine there, or you can run rigid, or you can run EMT. They say, you know what, here's what we're gonna do. We want the wiring method that you're going to use, the wiring method, to be restrictive. Just like we, it's a it's just like has a classified location, which is a patient care location. Yep. Yeah, but I mean, it's kind of like a location. So therefore, we want to do something special. Here's what we want. We want you to run a wiring method that itself, by itself, would serve as an effective ground fault current path as defined by Article 100 in compliance with 250.118, that by itself, it would clear a fault. Say, okay, got that. That's 517.13a. And then B says, well, listen, I don't care what you guys did in A. He wants you to put a copper insulated equipment grounding conductor inside the wiring method you ran in A. So therefore, what it means, and years ago, they used to call that a redundant ground, where you'd have the wiring method in A, you have of the, of the equipment grounding conductor of that type, and then B was a wiring method of an equipment grounding conductor of the wire type, complying with 250.122. Uh, one. So they want to make sure there's two. So let's just kind of go with that. Brian, let's see what you got there. Yeah. I was just going to make a quick comment. You know, we forget that a lot of times these people are unconscious because they've been drugged or they're, under, or they're traumatized or they're too weak. And so, you know, your initial thing is like, man, that's stupid to have to have two equipment grounding conductors. But the reality is these are people that if there wasn't somebody standing right there with them, they could do nothing to take care of themselves if there was something going on, even if it's a, a minor shock. And you're also sometimes, you know, invading the body. So this is really important stuff. Okay. So now, looking at the code, all branch circuits serving patient care space. So we have to know what the definition of patient care space. And that is where, you know, we, we covered it earlier. Shall be provided with an effective ground fault current path by installing, by installation in a metal, by by installation in a metal raceway system or a cable having a metal armor or sheath assembly. The metal raceway system, metal cable armor or sheath assembly shall itself qualify as an equipment grounding conductor in accordance with 250.118. Mike, uh, uh, a violation that I ran into a, as an inspector one time, it was a patient care space. They went underground with the branch circuit with PVC. And then they transitioned from PVC up to EMT. Now that branch circuit was not, <clears throat> did not have a, meta was not a metallic raceway all the way back to the panel. So that was a violation of 517.13A. So right. just, it's important to, to read that rule and know you can't run PVC. Well, dentist office, Dental yeah. chairs. I've seen that. Very common for the electrician to be slapping everything in PVC. Yep. And he runs the piece of PVC over to the dental chair and just hits it into the wall there. And later on, he wants to use the PVC. Well, no, the wiring method for anything within the patient care area has to comply with 517.13a. And Brian has it up there that it itself qualifies as an equipment grounding conductor. Well, Mike, uh, can I put two, two yeah. ground wires in the PVC yeah. to make it up? And the yeah, answer yeah. is, well, no, because the code says, well, why can't he use two ground? Because, see, the code wants one to be a mechanical equipment grounding conductor, which is a wiring method, and it wants one to be an electrical equipment grounding conductor, which is going to be a conductor. So we're, we're mechanically doing it two different ways, and the thinking is that maybe we're lucky that we won't mess them both up, that one of the two, but they're going to be installed in two different methods, 
And one is the wiring method it itself qualifies as an equipment grounding conductor. Looking at the graphics, so which ones would qualify as an equipment grounding conductor? Well, EMT, right? Yep. Okay, EMT, rigid metal, IMC, right? All of those would qualify. But in practical terms, you're not going to be running IMC or rigid metal, okay? No, so let's, I'm just listing the most common. But you might in Mario's slab scenario. Maybe in my, in my slab scenario, they could have done that. Could have ran EMT. Could have ran EMT. Okay, could have yeah. ran PVC rigid. I mean, okay, I mean rigid IMC. Okay, now, you can use flex, but flex only qualifies as itself as an equipment grounding conductor when you go to 250, that 118.5? Six. Six. No, then, five. You're five. right. And then it tells you the ampere rating of the circuits and the length of the conductor. So you can use some flex that doesn't go more than six feet on a 20 amp circuit. Sure. Okay. So we're sure. okay. Armor cables, not that common today, but armor cables where it has the 18 gauge aluminum bonding strip because the 18 gauge bonding strip bonds each convolution to each other. And that causes the armor sheet to be an effective ground fault current path. path. Okay. Now you can use or you can use uh, MC all purpose, and there's probably other manufacturers make it where there's a 10 gauge aluminum bonding strip, super like a story type of thing. Yeah, where the 10 gauge aluminum wire is actually connecting each of the individual convolutions, Regions. and it's bonding them across there. So therefore, the MC cable sheath itself of that type is an effective ground fault current path. Now traditional MC cable is not when it doesn't have the bonding conductor in there, and of course you can't run PVC. Okay, right. so those are the wire methods, yes. <clears throat> and just so people know, on that graphic there, on not the green MC cable, but what you're pointing on with the other arrow, that is FMC, which is less than six feet. So you could do that. Yeah, right here, like an example right here. Right there. The thing is, I'm not sure if this actually would qualify um, because <laughs> the maximum length of the circuit, flex metal conduit, cannot exceed six feet. So it's not like, well, as long as this is not more than six and this is not more than six, it's the total length of this. So I think I'd rather have Mike change his graphic here um, and, and run a piece of EMT here. And that way I know this is gonna be less than six feet. I can't, I'm sure the way this looks right here, this would be more than six feet, right? I mean, you're standing here and this is 48 inches and that ceiling is eight feet. And then you have up here, so, you know, it's probably more than, so if we just run a piece of EMT here, then that means no more than six feet, okay? Mario, you good with that? No, yeah, I just no, I just don't see where it says of the circuit in uh, two fifty dot one eighteen. All right, read it to me. Number <clears throat> five. Number five. Yeah. Listed flexible metal conduit meeting all the following conditions. The conduit is terminated in listed fittings. One second, all fittings that are listed. Right. Okay. Got it. The circuit conductors contained in the conduit are protected by an overcurrent device rated twenty amps or less. So twenty amp circuit, I could do this. Okay. The size of the conduit doesn't exceed an inch and a quarter. Okay, not big an inch and a quarter pipe. <clears throat> the combined length Hold of Hold on. The, the what? The combined length okay, go ahead. of the flexible metal conduit, flexible conduit in the same effective ground fault current path does not exceed six feet. So look at this example. That effective ground fault current path for that circuit, the combined yep. length. Yep. Yep. Cannot exceed six feet. Yep. And because that's too close for me. That's no, pretty close. That's pretty close. Yeah, I would rather just run a piece of EMT here, and then we can show, listen, this is okay as long as that com it complies with 251.18. And I don't want to get into, you know, well, I actually did that to scale, Mike, and you got about six feet, six inches, which is probably true. All right. So you good with that, Mark? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Clear. Okay, so now beside the wiring method effective ground fault current path, we need a wire type equipment grounding conductor effective ground fault current path. So there's two separate independent things. And this one says the metal sheath of traditional, oh, I'm, I'm making comments. Traditional MC cable um, does not meet the requirement as an effective ground fault current path, so I can't use traditional right. MC cable. Armor cable, because this 18 gauge Lombardi strip bonds each convolution, it complies with 250.118A. And that means it's fine. MC all purpose with a 10 gauge aluminum bonding strip, which is 251.18.10B, mm -hmm. that's okay because it's bonding, that is an effective ground fault current path. Now we go to B, it's the part I meant to get to. 
The ground, let me just say it. Everything now in a patient care space has to be connected with a copper insulated equipment grounding conductor that is installed in a wire method that complies with 517.13a. Right. So we got the wire method first. Now we need an insulated copper equipment grounding conductor inside those wiring methods. So now it goes on. Now what do you need it for? Well, receptacles. Without me reading all the text here, I need to take an insulated copper equipment grounding conductor and I need to connect it to the receptacle. That's B11. Okay. Now, B12 is talking about the box. So now I have to take the metal box, even though the metal box is connected with a wire method that has an effective ground fault current path, I still need to have an equipment grounding conductor in the wire method that is going to connect to the box. So one, I need the receptacle, that is B11. B12 is I need to go to the box. B13 says, well, any switches or any equipment that's connected to that circuit. Well, that means that if you went to 404.9B, which talks about the bonding of switches, it says, well, if you take a metal switch and you put it in a metal box and the metal box is connected to an effective ground fault current path, you're fine. Yep. But if you're in a patient care space, then we have to have an equipment grounding conductor connect to that switch. And if you are connecting to x-ray lighting or whatever the case may be, then you need to have an equipment grounding conductor in addition to a wiring method. So I was, this right here might be flex from this box here that's going to get over to that, to that light. Now four says face plates. Now this was a change made in the 2020 code. Let me see if, it, if I like it. I don't think I liked it. We'll see. Metal face plates must be connected to the insulated copper equipment grounding conductor by means of a metal mounting screw securing the face plate to a metal yoke or of a receptacle to a metal box. What it's saying is that when you connect the metal face plate, um, oh. That means you can't use an isolated ground receptacle. Well, no, hold on, hold on, no. It, let's get this code book up here. I know what the problem is here. Problem with 51713, I submitted a public input for this is that this rule is only talking about receptacles. But let's look at 51713. Um, let's go to the top of 5713 B1. B1. It says the following shall be directly connected to an insulated equipment grounding conductor that is clearly identified along its entire length by green insulation and shall be installed with the branch circuit conductors and the wiring method specified in A. Yep. The grounding terminals of all receptacles, right? Mm -hmm. Other than isolated grounds. Metal boxes. Three, all non-current conductive surfaces of fixed equipment. Four, metal faceplates. But watch this. Could you have a switch being supplied by the branch circuit wiring and it has a metal faceplate? Yeah. This is intended to say metal faceplates, meaning whatever metal faceplates might be on that circuit. But then it goes on and it says, by means of a metal mounting screw securing the faceplate to metal yoke or straps of a receptacle or a metal outlet box. So I've submitted a public input that you can also bond that faceplate to a switch. switch. You know what I'm saying? So that's, I knew there was something I didn't like about that, but the intent is, listen, real simple. You ready for this? The intent is, you put a metal faceplate on a switch that's connected to an equipment grounding conductor. You put a metal faceplate on a receptacle that's connected to an equipment grounding conductor. Then the metal faceplate is automatically connected to the equipment grounding conductor. Right, right, right. Without us having to do anything. So that's what it's saying. Now, there's an exception. This is where the controversy comes in. And I know David Williams and I, who's on the correlating committee, him and I went around and around and around. And, and I was wrong, of course. You know. Uh, uh, you ready for this? See that patient care vicinity that was, that was described in Article 100? That's a little bit more important. We're worried about people because they're in an examining chair, they're in an examining bed, they're on a treadmill. They're sitting, I mean, in the patient care facility. So when you know the patient care facility, which means you take the bed and you go six feet out all the way around it and you go up to seven and a half feet. feet. Okay, that's it. That's the space. And here's what it says you do in that space. Circuits for illumination located more than seven and a half feet above the floor. In other words, if you're outside of the space and switches located 
outside the patient vicinity, which is going to be more than six feet away, must be installed in accordance with 517.13a, which means you need to have a wiring method that's listed as an equipment grounding conductor. And an equipment grounding conductor wire type isn't required. So I don't have to have on this receptacle here. No, no, the switch. This switch right here is outside of six feet. I don't have to have it connected to an insulated equipment grounding conductor. The switch doesn't, just connect right. to the box. I don't have to, well, the cover plate's automatically connected with the screws. The lights up here doesn't have to comply with 51713B. Right. Because it's above seven and a half feet. Right. But now let's think about this. Go ahead, Mario, you can say. Yeah, that doesn't mean you could use which is what people traditionally think, you can use regular MC cable when you're above the seven and a half feet. You, you still have to comply with A. You can't use a traditional MC cable. Right. You're gonna have to use MC cable where the outer sheath is listed as an equipment grounding conductor. Right. Okay. Um, and the same thing with the switches. Same thing okay. with the switches. But what you can do is you can use armor cable. You could use armored cable without an insulated equipment grounding, grounding conductor, conductor. Yep. because armor cable the jacket is listed as an equipment grounding, grounding conductor. conductor but see this is a 51713a or here and i'm sure i'm sorry this is a 51713a here this is a 51713b B. i need both of these if i'm going to be in the patient vicinity, vicinity. but if i'm outside the patient vicinity and i need well, the receptacles also, but if I have a switch outside the patient vicinity or a light outside the patient vicinity, I just need the wiring method, method. not the insulated equipment grounding conductor. Equipment grounding conductor. Oh, um, oh, and of course, your size equipment grounding conductors, 250.122, 20 amp breaker, 12 gauge wire. They used to requirement, uh, they used to require minimum 12 gauge wire. They pulled that requirement out and they just simply say size it per 250, 122. It's a 20 amp circuit and it's going to be 12, 12 gauge. gauge. And there might be a larger equipment also, I don't know.